everyone, welcome back to the range. Ooh, banana magazine curved for your pleasure. 762 by 39, our check 46 grain training round we're gonna check out today. We'll throw this guy on the table and see what we have in store today. For our 762 by 39 testing, we have two barrel lengths afforded to us, a 10 and a half inch and 16. I figure that gives us the broadest spectrum of use case. There are shorter and certainly longer 762 by 39 firearms, but I would say those are the two most common. We have our Pro Chrono Digital at about 12 feet. It's 85, 90 degrees outside today. I don't know how humid it is. That's why I always put the little card up here, but it's partly cloudy and we're up at the 25 yard bench. So we're nice and shaded. We'll check these for velocity and accuracy. And without further ado, let's do it. Up first is our M92 path. This has the 10, 10 and a half inch barrel. This is a short barrel rifle running the Manticore Arms triangle stock here, a Vortex Spark that the battery went dead on and it's a 2354 battery, not a 2032. So I had to throw some washers in there so it would work. I don't have the mount for the external screen yet. So we're just gonna use the laptop here. Hopefully you can see it. That's why I always read out the numbers. That way I know when to shoot next. I threw some uh, bricks behind it because this RRD4 from JMAC Customs throws some serious flash and muzzle blast off to the side. Twenty five sixty nine, twenty four eleven, twenty four sixty nine, twenty four forty six, twenty four seventy three, twenty three ninety eight, twenty three ninety eight, or that was an air, I think. Air, air. Air. Why is we getting an air? There we go. 2506. 2492. 2464. 2501. 2424. 2478. 2389 and that's it. Figured I'd just run a couple extra since we have some more of this. And if you didn't know, this particular surplus ammunition is corrosive. So after you're done shooting your weapons, you'll want to run some nice warm water down your barrel, let it dry out, on clean off your gas piston as well in your gas tube just to make sure you don't get any rust forming. And now our 16 inch, this is the Palmetto State Armory AK-47. This is the GF-3. This is the same one that we ran the 3,000 round test through. We now have an ALG AKT trigger on here, still running the no name side mount and our Burris one to six, or sorry, our Burris mount with our primary arms one to six with the KISS reticle. This is my, pretty much my test scope that I use throw it on various firearms and sometimes it's pretty close other times it requires lots of elevation adjustments between calibers twenty-eight ninety-two twenty-seven twenty-six twenty-eight seventy-three 2783 2873 2872 2867 2801 and that's it powder definitely smells different than most of the 762 by 39 powder I'm used to looking through our scope here and looking at our point of aim versus point of impact actually between the 46 grain rounds 
we're only at 25 yards and the standard 123 grain ball we're actually on the same point of aim point of impact with both rounds so that's pretty good Be interesting to see i think we'll test accuracy at 50 yards with this round this training stuff just doesn't like me 3.11 inches at 50 yards same gun everything been waiting five to ten minutes between shooting groups guns obviously warm because it's 90 degrees outside today but that's probably about the best I'm gonna get probably why it's training ammunition using the one to six primary arms of the kiss reticle on the no name mount this is on the same day that we shot the subsonic groups from Detroit Ammo Co and Brown Bear it was a previous group here just you get four of them that are close and then a fifth one's a flyer I'm holding that pretty good in that sled I don't know. Your mileage, Maleri. While we're thinking about it, we're going to test these in ballistics gel. We have our standard FBI 10% clear ballistics gel block down there. We have the chronograph running, the high speed. We found some of these in the berm after shooting the accuracy portion, and they were pretty well the same. Not much deformation happening hitting the dirt. So I'm curious if this higher muzzle velocity will have any effect in clear ballistics gel. We'll take a shot with the 10 inch first, check it out. And if we see anything interesting, maybe we'll step up to the 16 inch. Velocity 25.06. Our block is pretty dirty, so I had to flip it around. So this is our entrance right here. This wound track that you see in the foreground is our little training round. A little bit of disruption going on the entire length of the travel there. That's the full 16 inches of this block. This path down here and this one are from some other testing, so please ignore those. Interesting, so full 16 inches of penetration. We did recover it about two inches into our block back there. I don't see any deformation going on. Give us a second and we'll pull that out of there. And now our 16 inch, we'll see if an increase in barrel length will help us here. Get my shot lined up where I want it. Velocity 2818. Well, it doesn't look like that velocity gain helped us. This track on top you see here is our 16 inch barrel. We dive down a little bit as we exit the block and you can see a full straight line penetration through that brand new 16 inch block. So that is over 32 inches of penetration. I didn't recover the bullet. I'll have to look for it in a second. I also apologize about forgetting to run the high speed on the 16 inch barrel. Although I don't think it's really gonna show us too much for temporary wound cavity because it looks like it's just pretty much just plowing straight through stuff. Probably gonna shy away from recommending this for any kind of self-defense load in 762 by 39. Definitely recommended for range plinking training use only here is our recovered bullet from the 10 and a half inch pretty much unabused there rifling marks and that's about it probably the standard thick bimetal jacket that Rushkin ammo is known for prevented that from really doing anything I'd say this little 46 grain round should definitely be left for training. It does offer lighter recoil, so if you're training a new shooter, the AK platform recoil is a little more stout than 5.56, but not too much. If you throw a nice break like a JMAC Customs on one of your guns, the recoil is going to be very manageable even for a new shooter. Accuracy wise, it's about what I always see out of anything AK, unless we're talking about an SST or something. You know, we're getting two to three inches at 50 yards, and that could be me. I'm a lead 
slinger, not a tack driver. So your mileage may vary. That's why I always tack that on there, just, just in case. Cover your ass, you know. We did run this in ballistics gel, but with that bimetal jacket that's thicker than most copper jackets that we're used to seeing in, say, M193, even with the increased velocity, we're not seeing any fragmentation or effect on this bullet. Pretty much straight line penetration. I didn't run another one in the 16 inch just to kind of see what the slow-mo would reveal because after I made that shot and did the little analysis on the gel, I watched a brown Labrador take hey, off doggy. down the road there and I don't want to accidentally hit someone's dog. I didn't see any tags on it. It didn't come when I called it, but it could be a neighbor's dog so I didn't want to chance it so I figured that was enough shooting for today. You can find these online at particular places like SG Ammo. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters and you all for watching. Until next time, catch you at the range. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. It's hot and partly cloudy. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. It's pretty darn hot outside today, probably 85, 90 degrees, but it's partly cloudy. <coughs> <coughs> While we have the opportunity, we're gonna test these in our FBI spec clear ballistics gel. We have it at about 12 feet. We have the, the I'd say those results definitely speak for themselves. This little training round should probably definitely... I'd say those results... Those were some 